Hey, Brad. How's it going? Hey. Hey, Jason. How are you, man? Hey, very good talking to you. Brad Gillis, the great one himself on the phone. Love your work. Oh, thank you very much. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Nova Scotia, Canada. There you go. Very cool. Yeah, and uh, you got a great product out here. Don't let up. Awesome work, Brad. Oh, good. Have you listened to the... Do you have a copy of the whole CD? I've uh, been streaming it from uh, what Frontier Records gave me, and uh, love it. Okay. Very good. Thanks, man. How was it recording this album, Brad? Well, our recording process was a little different, as the last few records we recorded were up at Jack's house and home studio. Jack ended up selling his house and moving up to Washington State, so we had to try something a little different this time. Basically, everybody has their own full-fledged home studio, but we needed to write the song, so we took the nucleus of the band, which is Jack Lays and Kelly Kagey and me, and went out to Kelly's house in Nashville, Tennessee, and sat around and just started jamming on different ideas. And after a couple of days, we came up about six or eight songs that we thought were viable. And then we ended up uh, getting a few people out to my house here in California, wrote some more here, then up at Jack's house in Washington, did some more there. And then we brought in Carrie Kelly on guitar, our, our latest guitar player, Carrie, Carrie Kelly, and uh, Eric Levy on keyboards and got together with them to, so they could add, add a little icing on the cake. And actually, Carrie ended up uh, bringing in a bunch of great guitar parts uh, to help out the songs, too. How long have you been playing with Carrie Kelly? He was in the band a couple years back to sit in. And when Joel Hoekstra left Night Ranger to go with White Snake, we thought it'd be an easy transition to bring Carrie back into the band. And also he's just a great, he's a fabulous player and a great guy. And he fits right in the band. Awesome. And uh, this album, you know, the inspirations, did you feel different, you know, recording, you know, this album, you know, compared to the other albums you did in the past with Night Ranger, different inspiration and ideas. Well, most of the lyric ideas and content come from Jack and Kelly, where the guitar parts come from me and Terry. So those guys are in charge of most of the lyrics, and I would come in and lend a hand a little bit on here or there. But basically, uh, we all have our different jobs that when we unite, makes us Night Ranger. And we always stick to that same format that we had throughout the years, which is the big, huge hook and chorus. Mm -hmm. uh, the big, the big, huge vocal hook and the choruses, and you know the twin guitar assault, and with harmonies and and uh, you know uh, good solos. So that's always worked for us in the past. So that's the format we use when we record and write songs. And Brad, let's say for guitar tones and stuff, have you changed much throughout the years? You know, let's say going back, you know, from Aussie days, which your guitar tone was fabulous. You know, and to now, how how have you evolved, you know, for guitar styles and tones? Well, basically, the guitar tone I had back when I played with Ozzy is, is hard to replace in a band like Night Ranger when you have two guitar players. Basically, the sound I had that back, back then was stereo. I had my two Boogie Mark C amplifiers plugged through two separate Marshall bottoms with low wattage speakers. And uh, my guitar tech, Mark, and Mark Newman, and I came up, started fiddling with tone and came up with the idea of running a 8 to 10 millisecond delay between both cabinets and to put a slight chorus hmm. between the cabinets. And also, it sure helped by turning the boogies up to 9 wow. and blasting those speakers. So that's how I got that tone with Ozzy. Uh, but Night Ranger being a twin guitar band, you can't have two guitar players going stereo. It's too much for the mix out front. So we just narrow it down to one huge hard tone, you know, for both of Carrie and I. 
Uh, I've been going through using the Boogie Mark Fives and Saldano Decatones and uh, for live. And uh, there's other amps I'm checking out now. But live is a different, you know, live for Night Ranger is, is a different animal when you have, you know, uh, two guitar players and everybody sings and and uh, five instruments. Now, when does when the band does play live, do you guys play each in stereo yourselves or just you know mono? No, no, we play mono. Like I said before, you know, playing with with Night Ranger, we can't really go stereo. It's 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 too it's too hard to get two guitar players with the stereo feel to get uh, a good mix out front. So we just get a straight ahead. Uh, you know, hard, great tone uh, with me and my strap through my amp and carry with this Les Paul through his amp. Have I seen correctly that the, the old guitar is on reverb for sale? Oh, no. Oh, well. Oh, no, that is a, uh, there's a guy named Jim Kara that makes exact replicas. Of my oh, guitar. okay. <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. No, they're, they're, they're exact replicas of my 62 Strat that I played throughout my career. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm staring at my Strat right now as we speak. Uh, I usually take it on the road sometimes, but I have Fernandez Brad Gillis copies from the, from the mid-'80s that they made that I use live now. But I set up all my guitars the exact same way with original Floyd Roses with no fine-tuners and and uh you know humbucker two singles and a built-in wireless inside the guitars uh so i started building wirelesses in my guitars uh, over 20 years ago and and uh i think i'm the only one doing it but it sure beats not having a cord in a pack yeah. you know coming out of your guitar because uh you don't have to worry about breaking it off and and the the Navy units I've been using all these years have been real solid, and have, uh, have stood the test of time and banging the shit out of. <laughs> yeah. And Brad, you know, for videos and stuff, are you guys going to be promoting a promo video soon? Is there something in the works? Yeah, we uh, we worked on a couple videos. I'm not sure which ones they're going to release. Uh, mainly, I just want to get the record out there on March 24th and have, and, and, and hear what people have to think about it. You know, whenever you do, whenever you record a new record, basically when you get done with it, you have to hand it to the record company. It takes about three, three months to release for them to get it, the whole packaging together. And that's the hardest part because you want people to hear it. You want people to either love it or hate it, but either way, you want them to hear it. And so, we're uh, we're waiting for you know it to be released on the 24th and start getting feedback. But from all the interviews I've been doing the last couple of weeks of people like you that have received the record, uh, the reviews have been great. Well, they can't be bad with you know songs like "Comfort Me" that just you know got released on Frontier Records. That's awesome. Also, you know, it's um, very good work you guys did. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we actually uh, that's my idea on "Comfort." that I had Jack and Kerry come over and, and, and finish it out over here at my house. So we got a lot of, we had a few little gems on the record and we'll wait to see what other people think. And we're excited for a new release. And because we do have a new CD coming out, uh, the Japanese like to bring us over. So we have a great tour lined up this year with, with shows with a bunch of great bands. And I know we have shows with Boston, the band Boston and, 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 uh, big festivals around the country, and uh, also uh, our Japan tour. When was the last time you played in Canada? Oh, I think we were up there definitely with Journey in 2011. Okay. Where we played uh, 65 shows with Journey and Foreigner around the world. But I'm not sure if we have been up there since. And if we did, we probably slid up and just did one or two shows. Uh, and slip back down. Oh, I think it was a couple of years ago we played with Loverboy up in Canada. Okay. Yeah. Because you guys do have a big following ago. here in uh, Canada. Yeah, well, we're booking shows still this year, and who knows, we might have to make a run through there, but a lot of shows aren't even advertised yet, and there's 
still uh, many more that need to be confirmed. And Brad, this is the 35th anniversary. Would you imagine it went this far? Oh, no way. I think we're very lucky to have sustained a 35-year career and have uh, still have the nucleus of the band to go out and play. I know we all get along. We have a lot of fun on stage. We have a lot of fun off stage. We keep everything light and positive. And since we only do, you know, 60 to 80 shows a year now, it's not like we're going on the road uh, on a tour bus for three months at a time. Now, back in the 80s, that was a lot of fun. But, you know, now that we're older, nobody wants to hop in a bus and go on tour for a couple months. We, we're more into the weekend warrior status where we leave on Thursday, play Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday, home on Monday. And we usually do, uh, you know, a 10-day to two-week run in the middle of summer. And that's good, too. Wow. Yeah, and um, when you look at the stats for Night Ranger, it's incredible. 17 million albums sold, you know, three, over 3,000 live shows, and 1 billion radio audience. You should be proud of yourself. Oh, yeah, but because of that, I'm deaf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm very happy with what this band has done, and that we're still out touring and, and putting smiles on people's faces, and Believe me, I have no problem, you know, going out on tour and playing wherever we're performing that night and watching people sing along to our hit songs. There's something that about that that you never gets old. And one more thing, Brad, the artwork concept, you know, for this album, whose idea was it to um, design it as it is? Well... We went through a bunch of different ideas, and me personally, I've owned, you know, three three challengers. And when we decided to go with the concept of racing cars, you know, I said, yeah, at least put a Mopar in the middle, you know, you put a put a Hemi Cuda or a, or a Challenger on there. So uh, that's how that idea came out, and which is kind of cool, getting back to the Midwest you know, muscle car vibe, and, and I think, uh, I can't wait to see the t-shirts. Hmm. <laughs> Excellent the art on them. Right on. Well, Brad Gillis, a pleasure talking to you, man. A very good uh, guitarist, one of the best, and um, what you did on this album and uh, the album for Night Ranger, this is uh, incredible. Don't let thank, up. Thank you, Jason. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jason. I appreciate it, and hopefully we'll get up through Canada and you can come see us. Oh, that'd be lovely. So uh, you have a good one, and uh, enjoy your interviews, my friend. Thank you, Jason. I will hopefully talk to you soon, my friend. All right. Have a good night. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.